I used to be an anime otaku. Are you an otaku too? Using science for peace? That's only an anime. Call me Otakon. Otakon? It stands for Otaku Convention. An otaku is a guy like me who likes Japanimation. I became a scientist because I wanted to make robots like the ones in the Japanese animes. So I've made a fair few videos on the anime fan community and anime in general as a genre. And I've talked about like its relation sometimes to Japanese politics. And I always enjoy talking about these things. And I guess you guys seem to like it as well. Now, I've been thinking about talking about this issue for a while, and it's about both black representation in anime itself, and also the general racism in the anime community. Now, I have made a video kind of about the bigotry in the community based on like some far-right beliefs a lot of people hold and the ties like 2chan and 4chan, but today I just wanted to talk about the focus on black characters and black fans specifically and their experience of this community. Now this video was kind of inspired by my Elden Ring video which was talking about the backlash to black content creators wanting better hairstyles for black players to roleplay and lots of fans in the comments going well it's 1400s Japan, like there were no black people so why are you complaining bro? It was obviously really ridiculous because Elden Ring wasn't set in 1400s Japan anyway. I don't even know where they got that from. But they were basically defending a Japanese company's decision to not be all that inclusive in, I guess, their character creator, despite the fact that they know there will be a lot of black players, particularly in places like America. And it ties in nicely to that kind of theme of Japanese media often using black characters, but not really portraying them in an accurate or even sensitive way because a lot of characters have essentially been racist stereotypes in the past. And then I want to end it on talking about the future for anime and manga and how there are more black creators getting involved and there is more black representation in this genre that is so popular with Americans in general. So all of that coming up for you in the video, but before we go any further, please like the video to support it. And in the comments, I guess two questions. If you are a black person watching this, what is your experience with either anime fans or depictions of black characters in anime itself? What did you think of Yasuke, which we're gonna be talking about in the video if you've watched it? And if you aren't a black person watching this, maybe in the comments write, what is your experience of anime in general and the anime community? Like, has it been a toxic experience or has it been a fairly positive experience? Also, if you want to support my work continuing, please consider becoming a patron. I want to build up as many $1 to $3 patrons as possible, and the benefits of that are getting access to the private patrons Discord server and my Nintendo Switch friend code. Also, follow me on social media at The Cavernacle on Twitter, on Instagram. Check out my second channel, The Cavernacle Extra, where I archive my live streams which I do twice a week. Also check out the subreddit in the description and also for every 5k we get a new chocolate orange. Help me get another one for this lovely pyramid. So I guess to start with I should talk about my own experience of anime since I asked all of you to write yours. So in general I'm not someone who is big on anime especially as an adult. I would probably never sit down and watch it. I do need to watch those Star Wars animes that they put on Disney Plus. They look really cool. Um, but growing up, I did watch a lot of them. I was probably in the right age group in that I was like, you know, five, six years old at the turn of the millennium. And you had dubs of like Pokemon being very popular, like the first season of the Pokemon anime. And then you had like Yu-Gi-Oh, Beyblade, and I watched all of them. Digimon to a lesser extent. So I watched all of them growing up, but not something I really stuck with, never watched Dragon Ball Z, didn't really care for it at all. And like, I do appreciate it as an art style and I probably do need to watch some of the classic ones. Like I haven't watched uh, Akira, I've never watched Cowboy Bebop. I did really like the Blade Runner 2049 anime like prequel they made, which was really cool. But yeah, by and large, my experience of anime has been pretty limited. But I have had a lot of experience with anime fans, particularly conservative anime fans, swarming my comments when I make videos about anime and like their community and stuff. And safe to say, most people who super identify as an anime fan like have a profile picture of like some anime girl 
I haven't had a very positive experience of them. But also, I think about everyone who follows me on Twitter. And nearly everyone has, like, an avatar, which is a cartoon. And a lot of them are anime characters. So, I probably have had a decent, like, positive experience of people. But anyway, it's pretty well known that because of things like 4chan and 2chan which used to just be anime message boards when they started there is a very very reactionary element within anime fans there's also conservatives who just put japan on a pedestal and they got into japanese culture through anime and they see japan as like this model society because they believe it's like ethnically homogenous oh so peaceful and clean just like a great place every country should aspire to be like japan isn't that right john tron i don't think japan is the country that you want to point to as your model homogenous I, society i just disagree i think it is a model society but i remember this article about two years ago and i want to start off with this a black model who received racist criticism for her anime cosplay said it won't stop her from doing what she loves. A black model received messages full of racial slurs and commentary after posting a picture cosplaying as a non-black anime character. Sherlene, a 22-year-old model and student in Liverpool, tweeted on June 29th an image of her dressed as Japanese character Rin Tosaka from the Fate Stay Night anime, according to the Daily Dot, which first reported on the incident. The picture shared with a photo of the animated character Inspiration received more than 70,000 retweets and 600,000 likes. But then came the harassment on Twitter, shared screenshots of messages full of slurs and insults with some people saying she shouldn't dress up as a non-black character. As I got a bigger audience, people that don't know me never really knew me. The racist ones, they're the ones who started the attack, she told Insider. She had been excited to dress up in cosplay for the first time, but as a black woman, she was hesitant as she'd witnessed the racist feedback her black friends received online when they posted cosplay pictures. I always see the kind of reception they get for cosplaying, and it's never been good. I knew kind of what to expect, but at the same time, it's never really expected. Racism remains a long-standing problem in the cosplay and fandom communities. Shakina Johnson wrote in ID that black women cosplayers are forced to deal with sexism, racism, body shaming, and colorism. She continued that they often face harassment for cosplaying characters who aren't black, alongside thinly veiled concerns of accuracy. After Sherlene shared screenshots of the harassment, some black anime fans replied that they were also afraid to participate in the cosplay community because of this racism. This is what terrifies me and stops me from cosplaying. We get hate just for existing. Because of the responses like these, that she's not going to give up cosplay because of racism. It's something I enjoy doing. I'm going to keep doing it regardless, especially if it inspires little black girls that like anime like me and they want to try too, then I'm going to keep doing it for them as well. So obviously absolutely terrible she had to go through that. And it makes you, you know, ask yourself the question, do anime fans have this visible problem based on something as part of the online community? Or is the community reflective of the source material? I would say it's a combination of both because a lot of Westerners, like I said, do put Japan on this pedestal. And when they're seeing something like anime, which is representing Japanese culture for many of the animes and mangas, they see it as something that shouldn't be messed with because they think Japan has done something good by being like, ethnically homogenous so when they see more black characters or black women cosplaying as their favorite characters they see it as kind of like an intrusion into this fantasy of japan that they have but also as we're going to get into now anime has never been that good at representing black people or having decent black characters who aren't racial stereotypes and some of the actual animation of these characters is just like really racist as well. So an article by Princess Weeks, Blackness in anime and how it affects blurs online, the Mary Sue. Black characters are not new to anime, but their prominence designs and types of characters have most certainly changed overall for the best. But in recent times, there have been some misfires from those creators who I'd like to imagine don't fully understand the scope of the images they have put together. So Mr. Popo from Dragon Ball, and Jinx from Pokemon haunt my childhood. Now these ones are really, really bad, and I remember Jinx as well. And of course, people will say, 
Jinx is meant to be a Pokemon, which is not a human, blah, blah, blah. But as this article will go on to show you, it's pretty clear it does look like a character being some sort of racist caricature of a black woman. Don't imagine that black children weren't very quick to pick up on the similarities between the designs of these characters and minstrel shows. Mr. Popo takes the form of a short, plump humanoid. His distinguishing features include his markedly dark complexion, red lips and pointy ears. In many ways, and in his costuming, it's likely he's a reference to a genie in Middle Eastern and Arabic mythology. However, it doesn't read that way to many black viewers for obvious reasons. Dragon Ball creator Akira Toriyama has never commented on Mr. Popo's design, but the anime and recent productions have changed him from a solid black colour to blue. And I think they also changed Jinx's skin colour as well. Now, before the trolls come in, none of Popo's features alone is racist. It is the racist Infinity Stones all being brought together that makes it a problem. In addition to Mr. Popo and Jinx, there was also Chocolate McDonald from Shaman King. He is an African-American, but wears an African tribal wrap around his waist and looks like a racial character from the 40s. A weird homage to Ebony White from the Spirit comics. His design has been slightly changed in the new anime, but the design itself is still garbage. And I say that as someone who doesn't like Shaman King, it just doesn't work. One of the most recent examples is Super Alloy Black Luster from One Punch Man. Black Luster looked fine in the manga, but the anime gave him black faced lips and it just ruined everything. So they're like the worst examples of just the drawings being insanely insensitive. But I just wanna to touch on this bit of the article as well, which is interesting, where it has like black characters, but people kind of deny their blackness. So um, when I was a Bleach fan, I fell in love with the effortlessly cool Yurichi Shihoin. Not to mention she was this gorgeous black woman with long purple hair and just flexed on everyone. She had a man and Loki a girlfriend and Loki another man. It was great. But of course, discourse rage about whether she was really black. With Yurichi, there was all these well she could be this conversations, despite the fact that Tite Kubo already included diversity by having a half Mexican character, so it wasn't a reach. Talking about race in anime always turns into a bunch of, well, actually they have insert hair and insert eyes, so they could be any race. Well, then they can be black. A lot of this comes from any time a slightly darker skinned character would appear in anime or manga. They were usually presented in an othered way. The race neutral thinking that Western anime fans have adopted made it hard for black fans to even adopt non-stereotypical brown skinned characters into their personal headcanon. Thankfully, we not only have black characters in anime, but we have got better designs. So I find it very interesting that anime generally has a lot of racially ambiguous characters. And that means a lot of white anime fans feel like most characters are white. So if you watch something like Pokemon, when you are like looking at some of the scenery in the art style, you're thinking that these people are maybe Japanese, but then of course a lot of them look white. So you can say like Ash Ketchum is white, Misty is clearly white. But then there are other ones who are more ambiguous and you're not really sure if they're meant to be Japanese or they're meant to be like more European. But then for a lot of you know white Westerners, they just kind of claim it all and they're like, yeah, they can be white just like me. But like this article was saying, when it comes to a darker skinned person, in their experience of interacting with the fandom, it's always like, no, this person isn't like black. They must be something else. There's no way they can be an actual black person because I guess for some racist anime fans, it's just the fantasy that they don't want black people in their anime. But yeah, early on, the depictions are really bad. And we're actually going to read an article a bit later of the history of manga because a lot of people speculate anime itself isn't inherently racist as much as the source material is inherently racist. So anime is often just a reflection of the source material being racist rather than unique animes being created with these racial stereotypes in mind. But Vice did a good article about black anime fans and it interviewed a lot of them and asked them how they felt about the community and the art form as a whole. And I found it really, really interesting. So we're gonna read little interviews with black anime fans. So this by Cecilia de Anastasio what black anime fans can teach us about race in America from Vice. So Chanel P22, what do you think about the fact that there aren't many black anime characters? Was that a barrier to engagement? It was at first. When I first started coming to anime conventions, I was a bit afraid actually to cosplay any characters. I thought they aren't black, I can't do that. I thought you had to actually look like the character in order to dress like her. But I mean, I saw people with my skin tone dressing like the character they wanted and thought I can do that too. I thought, I guess it doesn't matter that there aren't black characters, but I think we need to do more black characters. Are you interested in greater Japanese culture too? I went to Japan when I was in high school, actually. I did an ambassador's program my senior year. I got a lot of dirty looks there. 
walking around as a black student. A lot of shop owners didn't want to talk to me. They followed me around the store. Why do you think that happened? I guess they probably know the American stereotype that black people steal. That's the problem with stuff in America. Stereotypes follow you everywhere. How did it feel for you to love Japanese culture but be treated that way? It upset me, it really did. I was so excited to go there and I read a lot of stuff about how the Japanese are really polite. The fact that I was treated like that ruined my experience. After the fourth day, I really wanted to go home and we were there for a week, but you still love anime. I'm not going to let what people who create it do spoil the fact that I enjoy it. They're still really good stories. In terms of anime fan culture at conventions, do you feel like people are accepting? Yeah, for the most part, I do get a lot of younger black girls messaging me. One young girl really wants to cosplay Sailor Moon herself, but was scared of wearing blonde hair because of how people feel about her skin being really dark. I said, just do it. You want to do the character so bad, so you're being afraid of what people will say. You shouldn't change that. She did it, and she sent me pictures. It was adorable. Found that really interesting and how awful their experience was of some people in the anime community and also just of Japan itself. And I think it also speaks to Japan's soft power because this person was an anime fan who took a lot of interest in Japan and then she fought like the stereotype. Japanese people are really polite, but then they have the experience of racism in Japan itself, which kind of shatters the illusion that Japan is like some wonderful tolerant utopia that is also homogenous and preserves its culture. And we're gonna talk about Naomi Osaka at the end of the video, but of course, even you know her being a prominent Japanese person who is mixed race, has shown a lot of the conversation in Japan and exposed a lot of the xenophobia and racism against black people from Japanese people. But it is good to see a lot of um, black cosplayers and anime fans standing up for themselves and deciding just to do it anyway, despite the backlash they get. It's very admirable. And it plays in nicely to the next thing we're gonna talk about, and it's how black representation in anime is becoming more prominent and is kind of being a response to the decades of racist depictions and stereotypes. Ayasuke is the anime that came out last year about a real life African samurai. Now I remember there was a bit of backlash because it obviously took loads of liberties with the history but then there was stuff like robots and mechs in it. But I found the interview of the show's creators really, really interesting to show their feelings in making this and how it is a response to the previous depictions of black people in anime. So by time, some seeds are being planted how Yasuke paves a new path for black creators in anime. It was around 13 years ago when LaShawn Thomas first learned of Yasuke. At the time, Thomas came across a 1968 Japanese children's book that saw illustrations of the real-life African warrior who arrived in 16th century Japan and served under Oda Nobunaga, a greatly influential feudal warlord who is widely regarded as the first unifier of the country. It kind of felt like a secret treasure, Thomas said. That disbelief has since faded, and more than a decade after his revelation, the longtime animation producer and comic book artist, whose previous credits include Cannon Busters, The Legend of Korra, and The Boondocks, is now the creator and director of the Netflix anime series Yasuke. To create the series, Thomas, born in New York, is now based in Tokyo and teamed up with a Japanese studio called Mappa, who made things like Attack on Titan in the final season. The music producer, rapper, and filmmaker Fly and Lotus composed the music for the show and served as executive producer. There is a serendipitous nature about this project. How an African-American man goes to Japan to live and work amongst the very best in Japanese anime, to create an anime about an African who goes to Japan, live amongst the Japanese elite and become a warrior. So the subject of black depiction was front of mind for Flying Lotus and Thomas in the creative process for Yasuke. Flying Lotus brings up comments from observing past works of anime. Man, how are they gonna do us like that? Go draw the hands right, why the lips gotta look like that, he recalls. On the note of coloring black characters' palms in a lighter tone than the rest of the hands, Thomas said that the design is often omitted for financial reasons. Black creators in the US have never, if rarely, colored the palms of their black characters' skins accurately. We don't normally do that because TV productions are very low budget, generally compared to feature films. But in creating Yasuke, Thomas wants to do something different. As someone who's self-aware of that as a producer and a black creator working with black characters predominantly, that is something we wanted to add. Thomas recorded his experience working on the anime series Cannon Busters, which released on Netflix in 2019, based on the 2005 comic he had co-written. When I did Cannon Busters, which was my first show of Netflix featuring a predominantly brown cast, there were so many notes I had to give on the show. They were just on default mode drawing these black characters with sausage lips. 
He said this type of art style had been standardized in Japanese animation since a few decades ago, and it's one that has been influenced by minstrel images from white Western media. We didn't have any problems with Mappa, but I had to be super careful about my intentions on how to depict Yasuke based off my own experiences working on Cannon Busters. I don't think it's a malicious thing, but I definitely think that there needs to be someone there to be like, hey, this is not cool, perhaps try it this way. Thomas also explained that he thinks some of the criticism towards anime directors regarding racially insensitive depictions of black characters has been misdirected. He noted that many of the series that have received complaints are adapted from long-running manga. It's not the Japanese directors who are saying this is what black people look like, it's the manga creators because the Japanese directors are adapting exactly that from the manga. It really puts the onus on the manga, the manga creators who are depicting us in those negative ways in Dragon Ball Z, The Promised Neverland and One Punch Man. And Thomas said when it comes to Japanese anime creators adapting manga, there is so much respect for the source material that they tend to replicate the art. There isn't going to be a social justice consultant during the anime adaptation saying, hey, black people don't like the way they look here. Let's change Akira Toriyama's Mr. Popo, Thomas said. Blind Lotus chimed in, honestly, they should though, because that is offensive. That's a quick phone call that don't take much to verify, like ask a black guy. The manga creators need to be a bit more educated because they don't have a problem getting white Europeans right and they're not Japanese either, Thomas continued. They're very careful in the depictions of European history. They don't have any real experience with the African diaspora. So what they wanted to achieve with Yasuke and they both say, um, the significance of their creative direction can't be understated. Who knows about where LaShawn, me and Lakeith will go after this. I just hope that this project shows the world that there are so many black anime fans. Thomas said that as a 16 year old black kid, he would have been deeply impacted by a group of black men, each respected in his field, coming together to create a Japanese anime about a black hero. As a black man seeing a dude from New York City doing this stuff, I would have lost my mind. He said referencing his South Bronx roots. Thomas said a project like Yasuke would have propelled him to do something similar. I didn't have that, so for me at the age that I am now, I'm just trying to be who I needed at 16 as a black kid. So regardless of what you think of the Yasuke anime, I think this is like a big moment for black creators getting into anime a bit more. And of course these people already had a background in anime, but this story is of course about primarily an African person in a foreign culture. And I did really like the parts where they said it reflected kind of like how they felt going over to Japan to actually work on this. But they bring up a lot of good points of how being racially sensitive is not actually very, very hard. And it just takes a tiny bit of effort. And I know people whine about it all the time. Like, you know, do you need people there to check if it's like woke enough or something? But just, you know, not drawing black people in an extremely racist way shouldn't really be something that is so hard. And of course, Japan and America have really close cultural links. It's not like Japanese people have never seen black people before. Like if you consume American media, like a lot of Japanese people do, like Hideo Kojima is probably my favorite Japanese creator, absolutely loves American media. He's always loved American media. And even though he's nearly 60, even the films he would have consumed in his youth would have had black Americans in it. But somehow the manga artist still didn't see a problem in drawing black characters in a really, really stereotypical way. And even they say their experience working in the anime industry, they've seen this firsthand where they've seen Japanese creatives draw black people in a racist way. I also like the part at the end where he says like, this would have been so great for him as a 16 year old. So I'm sure this anime would have inspired a lot of people to just like look at that art form as something black creators can really get into a lot more and really tell their own stories through this visual medium. And I think it's just a really cool story to blend like African and Japanese culture together. And I've made videos on this as well, but the depiction of black people isn't the only problem that anime has. The depiction of women is also terrible in a lot of it as well, but maybe a whole nother video on that another day. Now on the manga topic, I just wanna finish off with this because I read a good article about Naomi Osaka. So of course, like I mentioned earlier, Naomi Osaka being mixed race and being and being like half ethnic Japanese has like sparked a lot of conversation in Japan itself. Obviously a lot of ugly racism about her as well. But there's a good article I also read. Japanese comic creators grapple with racism. So a three time Grand Slam champion and the world's highest paid female athlete, tennis player Naomi Osaka is a popular figure worldwide. In Japan, her image graces not only t-shirts and key holders, 
but now also the pages of manga. Two previous attempts at illustrating her in an Australian newspaper cartoon and a Japanese advertisement misfired when both portrayed her with white skin and light coloured hair. But in December 2020, the magazine Nakayoshi debuted unrivaled Naomi Tenkaichi inspired by Mrs. Osaka's exploits. It avoids the earlier mistakes in part because her sister, Mary, supervised the project. Lanesha Campbell, a manga essayist who regularly contributes to pop culture website but Waibo, said, More manga creators are putting in the effort to portray black characters more respectfully. A great example of this is Aren Ojiru, a supporting character in Haikyuu. His features and skin tone are done in a way that respectfully captures and portrays black features. Author and Japan Times columnist, Bay McNeil points to the earlier debacle over Mrs. Osaka's cartoon image as a catalyst for change. As awareness is raised in various Japanese media, some artists are definitely taking better care when they choose to include non-Japanese characters in their work. No one wants to be the focus of negative global attention. It's sad, but sometimes it takes an instant like this to make people take notice. In many classic manga from the 80s and 90s, black people are drawn with big lips and portrayed as intimidating and often stupid, points out longtime manga fan Diamond Cheffin. Even in the early 2000s, you still find those caricatures. Naomi Osaka, who has a Haitian father and a Japanese mother, has said she experienced racism in Japan in the past. Japan is a very homogenous country, so tackling racism has been challenging for me, she wrote in Esquire. I have received racist comments online and even on TV, but that's the minority. In reality, biracial people, especially athletes, have been embraced by the majority of the public fans, sponsors and media. We can't let the ignorance of a few hold back the progressiveness of the masses. Aside from the manga about Osaka, recent developments in the industry point to a new sensibility towards ethnic distinctions. I do find that portrayal of black people has come a long way, says Mrs. Cheffin. We are getting cool characters like Ogun from Fire Force. Overall, this new generation is doing an awesome job. However, I'd like to see more black characters on a greater scale, not just sprinkled here and there. Obviously, while Naomi Osaka did get a bit of a backlash, like the article was saying, it has brought a lot of awareness to Japanese society about the issues to do with biracial Japanese or just their depiction of black people in general. And I guess for a lot of Western anime fans, especially the reactionary ones, I guess they're kind of waking up to the fact that Japan isn't as ethnically homogenous as they think it is. But there are lots of different ethnic groups in the Japanese islands itself. And it's just good to see that someone like Naomi Osaka through things like this manga are bringing more awareness that not everyone looks the same in Japan, not everyone has the same culture in Japan, and there is room to explore different cultures of Japanese people like Osaka, but also room to be more culturally sensitive when you're choosing to include black people in your manga, in your anime, for your Western audiences, and treating them as actual human beings rather than imported racist stereotypes from places like America. So overall, I believe there is a really large segment of anime fans who are very, very bigoted and very, very reactionary. And there's lots of reasons they like anime and there's lots of reasons why they seem so protective of these characters, races and ethnicities. And it's really not surprising to me that this community can be such an unwelcoming space for black fans and sometimes black creators as well. But I am a bit hopeful with the last part of the video, with all the changes that are coming. Like the Yasuke thing is really, really cool. And the thing with Osaka is really, really cool. And there are like new characters being developed in anime, which are treated with respect. So I think it obviously has a long way to go, but with anything, I feel like the next generation of people, people who grow up watching things like Yasuke will make it an even better place for black representation and hopefully completely move away from the stereotypes. I mean, at least they kind of realize by changing like Jinx's skin color that they have done something wrong here, although they haven't really said anything about it. And while I think the anime community won't change necessarily with the anime itself, I do think removing things that breeze this reactionary fan base will help in the long run. There are too many racist people who become attached to anime because it seems to portray some sort of society they want to be a part of. And that's why so many weebs turn out to be racist simps for the Japanese state. So overall, just an interesting topic I wanted to discuss. It's nice to be a bit optimistic about something for once, but I feel like there's a lot of work to do with anime fans in general being so protective of old stuff. Like remember the Cowboy Bebop um, Netflix show and how they would just like dogpile people who worked on the show on Twitter because they felt like they ruined their whole life by adapting like a 25 year old anime. Anyway, that is it for the video. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.